Today we are messing around with the curved backdrops. Um, I built a, a jig for curving cardboard and the first one didn't succeed so I'm not going to bother showing that but this one is more simpler and really it's just a corner that you need and sorry about the finger uh, the corner that you need in this one is standardized to a uh, uh, oops sorry I need to get the tape measure out so this one standardized to 17 inches in height which is the height of the backdrops on this layout and this piece here will hopefully fit there um, the idea was to just make a, a 12 inch radius curve a 90 degree curve and then just fit it here and then use the putty or something to fill in the seams and then the rest would be scenery and as you can see here well this is the this is the uh, version 2.0 of the jig so 1.0 failed 2.0 looks okay but i used a 2x3 here and i couldn't uh, curve this further into the corner so i've uh, gone back and i've cut a 2x2 two two and i'll replace it with a 2x2 two two, so now i could even make it uh, even a tighter corner because i don't know if that corner is tight enough or not but as you can see both sides are adjustable so if you really need one side to be uh, less straight than the other then you could just sort of put this closer here and then put this further away and then the corner will still be tight as as much as you like but you could have a longer straight section here so it's really not to waste any hardboard uh, I mean these are all scraps I had leftovers and they just have to be 17 inches in, in width and really I mean all of this is just leftover 2x4s and 2x3s that I quickly made this corner and with this I mean I can curve any any inside backdrop and also I mean if I want to I could probably do the fascia but the fascias are more um, the radius is, is is wider so they can be just curved in place and this was a tip used from uh, Larry Puckett the DCC guy that he used Windex and really you just soak the thing in Windex on both ends and curve it in place so that's about that we'll see how it turns out when it dries while we're waiting for this to dry some of you might wonder why do it this way well the benchwork was built as dominoes and the backdrop is part of every domino in reality I mean this is really like a modular layout that comes with the backdrop and the surface and everything else there are no corners made because obviously they're all individual pieces in this case they were eight feet long because I just wanted to maximize on use of the wood now all these corners sorry about the movement a lot of it and over there and over there and over there they need to be fit, filled uh, the windows have their own panels that just slide into the slot um, I can show that basically it would take a see there is a slot right there all along the window and you just take the panel and put it there and then it looks somewhat decent I mean it's okay it's not seamless but the access to the window is not blocked and it's only a matter of what kind of a scenery or industry is going to be here and technically this whole section is supposed to be lock port um, a seaport or 
docks or warehouses or refineries or I don't know, whatever, grain silos, all kinds of things that come by sea to the land and go off the land by sea. That's how that is. When you need to access the window, you just lift this out and the window is clear. That's about that and uh, we'll see now once the other um, piece dries. It looks dry, so really, I, I'm not sure what is there a set time um, to wait uh, for this to dry. It feels cracked here and the, the edge is kind of um, sharp, so it's possible that it cracked, but you know, probably it's gonna be invisible. It still feels um, wet to the touch, so it might need an hour or so more. And uh, the humidity here is 52%. I mean, it, it's always about around 50% here because this is conditioned space, so all year round it's 20 degrees, 19, between 19 and 22, and about 50% humidity, so might take a bit longer for this to dry. We'll see. I'll, uh, I'll have a follow-up in the next segment. Well, this first attempt, um, I guess, a somewhat of a success. As you can see, a crack there. And I guess there is a long crack all along here. So, I'm not sure why. Well, I think I know why I pressed with my finger here rather than uh, pushing down into the to the valley and that's why it turned out like this so I have two more pieces here and I'll try those next and see what happens but first I'm going to replace that uh, 2x3 with a 2x2 more to come Suffice to say, the next two attempts failed, and I managed to crack the hardboard by pushing this way and down this way with my hands. So, this is you know an engineering problem requiring engineering solution, and we need a tool. Hopefully, this tool works. These are the forms I cut out of the original tool that I made to actually <laughs> mold the hardboard into, but that didn't work out that well. They're still at 12 inch diameter and I'm hoping to just press down and they should evenly press down without cracking anything. But I think I need to figure out this distance here because maybe that's too tight. I'm not sure yet. That's what it looks like. I don't know, with the thickness of the masonite and everything, we'll see how this works out. And there it goes, cracking. I really do not know what am I doing wrong here. Everything looked fine. And it pressed evenly down with this tool. And now the masonite gave in in the middle. Okay, back to the drawing board. Well, here is another attempt. This time, only one side's been soaked, the inner side, and um, only the actual area where the band is being made was soaked, and also I let it sit and soak, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, 20, until all the bubbling and water was like, or the liquid was sort of like 
dissipated or evaporated and then the surface was just looking wet and now it's propped and I'll leave it probably overnight I don't know we'll see what happens well I have to say that this time it worked and uh, it looks all right actually it's not so bad the hardboard quality is probably crap and you can see that where it was wet it's kind of paler and it's rougher than this area here and then one of the pieces or the back kind of looks cracked in some spots maybe you can't see that on this one but uh, there you see it like that semi-success in some way but really no one's gonna see that portion Sorry about the dust. no one's gonna see that portion there anyways so once this is put in place and puttied or something I mean painted there was going to be a no seam I guess just a matter of how to actually connect well, and this needs to be trimmed down because it's higher how to connect the, the pieces, the corners to the rest of the backdrops probably just this, some kind of a double sided tape maybe one of those carpet tapes and that's not I mean, that's gonna make it sit there and stay in place forever I'll, uh, I'll leave it at this. That's it for now. Okay, today's video is a bit short, more or less. It's about these remote switches or outlets that you can get on Amazon and whatever else. And you can have five channels and uh, wire them any way you like and then you can turn things on and off and I have three set up right now for the lights in the layout room if we take a look three is this aisle that we are here on or the peninsula you can turn oops sorry about that <laughs> you turn on and then you can also turn the second one and number one for me is staging we go over there you'll see that we have light in the staging as well and uh, it makes it really nice to finally have lights and not have to crawl underneath benchwork and whatever else plugging and unplugging power bars basically you just you know off on you know makes it nice and convenient to do all these things and the first peninsula and the second peninsula and off the staging and then over there on the uh, wiring part or on the receiver part this is the transmitter it's just a simple hook up to uh, the device that you want to uh, control and then the these uh, receivers also have manual switches as well so for some reason if you want to Turn the device on and off manually you can but this is also used for programming and I think you can actually line these up or not line them up but connect them to a single switch a single channel so that you could turn on more than one device and there is a thing I'm trying to figure out next whether I should power the districts uh, individually because uh, I still have four and five channels free so should the, the, this district, this is a power district here there is a booster and a power supply for it and then there is the LCC power point or actually this is a um, LCC um, repeater, not a power point but the question is should I individually turn the districts on or should you just, you know, if I press the button number 4 it turns everything on I mean, both have advantages I suppose and disadvantages Let's say you just want to operate in 
one area, I mean, you can just turn this district on and leave this one off because this peninsula is separate from this peninsula. And basically here is the lift out. This is where the cutoff is. I mean, right now I have a temporary gap uh, right there. But really, I mean, the gap would be here where the lift out is. You know, if for whatever reason, I mean, if I just want to run trains here and not anywhere else, I mean, that's doable. That's it. More to come in the next video. This is just a follow up to the previous segment. Turns out that I need to put two of these together, one of them for the lights and the other one for the power district. Well, they don't really fit together on this power splitter and they can't fit into the outlet either. So that's just something that everybody should have in mind if they wanna get one of these. I suppose they might have different models and different manufacturers where the power outlet is probably at the bottom and so you could plug it in above here. I mean, it would be nice if this was a rotating one. I don't know how expensive would that make it more, but I mean, they can, you know, spend 15, 20 cents more for the materials and then charge us a dollar more for that feature. It would be quite helpful rather than having to use you know, additional extension cords and, and power bars and whatnot just to get the ability to plug in more than one. On the other subject, uh, programming these is, is really easy. I've just uh, tried it. This is a manual switch, but it's also a programming button. Right now, is, you see that uh, this is programmed to channel five. And that's the dash five. 315 is just, I think, identifier for that specific group of five uh, receivers. And they're factory paired, but sometimes, you know, the pairings don't work and you need to uh, reprogram it. Or if you want to pair uh, any number of these, and I, I would figure that, I mean, you can probably pair dozens of these if you need to, <laughs> if you have lights all over the place, um, you could pair, um, as many as you need of these receivers to the transmitter and it's very simple I mean first it needs to be erased you just hold the programming button and then you plug it in and then this LED will flash and then once it starts flashing you know that it's what they call cancelled really it's, it's erased programming and then to uh, to program it to whichever channel you, you would uh, like to have it on you just plug it in and then you hold the programming button and then this LED will flash slower and then you just take the remote control here and then you can just press either on or off for whichever channel you want to assign this and then this will flash uh, once and then pairing is done basically and these work on uh, it does uh, 432 megahertz i mean it doesn't say here but you can see the specs for the outlets and this manufacturer actually makes um light sockets as well and uh, you could probably use those if you have normal light bulbs that you want to wirelessly connect i don't because all of the uh, oops, sorry about that. all of the lights are led lights i have them all hooked up into string of four or five and then they go into the um, power um, socket in the ceiling there and then down into the power outlet on the wall but if you have normal light bulbs or led light bulbs of any kind I mean, you could probably get uh, those sockets and then use those uh, let me just grab those quickly and then i'll show you what they look like okay here are these uh light sockets or lamp sockets as they call them you get three and you get a remote but I mean really you could just get as many as you need and it says here at the back that they're 433.92 megahertz I mean that's just a standard frequency they use for all these technically somebody could just probably drive by and you know turn all of your lights on and off if they knew 
that you had these on in your layout room or in your house. But um, uh, otherwise, I mean, you can probably have 20, 30, 40 as many. These are just receivers. The whole thing is really happening here. So this transmitter sends a signal on 433 megahertz and then all of these uh, receivers pick it up and uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the range is if we can see here um, it says stronger not. so you can actually turn it on if you if your layout room is more than one room or it's you know one of those larger layouts this room is 20 by 13 so everything is here but I mean some people have 30 by 40 and whatnot and they might have walls in between and, and such so all those things might interfere with the signal but I, I've not tried this um, to see how far I can turn it on or off but I don't think it matters I mean it's probably you know in the house range or in your basement or garage or whatever you have attic whatever you have your um, layout set up okay so that's for this uh, video and I guess that would be final segment. Bye for now.